Something is rotten in Denmark. Hello friends, it's Jermaine Manzi from Our Reviews Will Kill You, the podcast. And we're here today to talk a little bit about what is going on with the Eternals. You know we've reacted and talked a little bit about the teasers and the trailers and you know it's another big benchmark MCU film. But what is this? It has gone rotten? I watched this thing. It teetered about two days ago, back and forth as to whether or not it would go rotten. It was at 59% and 60%. And then it seems like once the other critics got wind that it was that it was okay to make it rotten, they just dumped on it and it's dropped at 53% after 180 reviews. That's pretty intense. This is the lowest rated of all the MCU movies and the criticism's pretty tough. So I find it kind of interesting and we're going to try to dissect it just a tiny bit to see what's going on here. To be honest, I have not seen the film. I have no judgment on it. I saw the trailers. We reacted to them. We said how we felt that they were boring and it looks like that may be the case. So I'm not here to judge, just break down the facts. So let's take a look here at the critic consensus. And I have, I, I don't think any of these reviews are going to spoil anything. So if you'd like to go see this movie, you know, feel free to see it. I'm not trying to discourage you one way or the other. I just think it's a fascinating shift in what's going on in Hollywood. Are the critics back to just doing their jobs and actually reporting whether or not things are good or bad? Or is there another agenda behind this? Ooh, we'll take a look. So critic consensus, an ambitious superhero epic that soars as often as it strains. Eternals takes the MCU in intriguing and occasionally confounding new directions. Now, let's see here. I'm going to just take a look at them. Eternals is too much of a not good enough thing. All right, Adam Graham from Detroit. This movie is more risk prone than the majority of Marvel titles, yet it frustrates Yet it frustrates even beyond a screenplay full of self-competing interests. As far as the MCU fatigue goes, well, at this point, it goes pretty far. A Marvel Cinematic Universe origin story that suffers from all the baggy, convoluted drawbacks of the form. Here's a good one. The Eternals is a strange film, both within context and on its own, but in the lookalike, soundalike, corporately synergistic M MCU, per perhaps that's not such a good such a bad thing. I don't know if that sounds like a good review. Let's see here. Uh, this is, is another bad one. The first genuinely bad film from the Marvel films, Chloe Zhao's Eternals, is a colossal bore, a bloated, meandering superhero odyssey. Interesting. Here's, an, here's a good one, but it doesn't sound so good. Oscar-winning filmmaker Chloe Zhao is a gifted director, but it, this crowded, overly exp expository Marvel entry doesn't quite come together despite impressive visuals and an excellent diverse cast. Right. So how did you give it a good review? If, if that's your review, that it doesn't quite come together. Like, I, I am confusion. All right. So we've got the basics here. We understand that there are no reviews from the audience yet. As none of the audience, we have not seen it. These are the critics, you know, the same ones that love Last Jedi for being diverse. And they like that it's diverse, but they don't like the movie. So let's talk a little bit about some of the controversies. Eternal star Kumal Nanjiani hits back over MCU film is review bombed on IMDb over LGBT plus representation. Now, a lot of the press was actually re re reporting it as being review bombed in general. And we're talking a couple hundred reviews. If you looked at IMDb and they've taken it all down, IMDb had like a hundred five star reviews and maybe a hundred one star reviews or like negative, like ones and like a hundred tens or however IMDb does their rating system. I wouldn't exactly call that review bombing. So IMDb caught this and they brought all of the ratings down because no one had seen it. So here's what they're saying. Uh, there were more than 400 one-star reviews on Eternals a week before the launch. That does not count all of the 
positive reviews like 10 or 5 star reviews that were up there as well so it was being like equally bombed from dummies on both sides right now Kumal Nanjiani went and said looks like we're upsetting the right people Eternals opens uh, November 5th because he's responding to the fact that he thinks it's getting review bombed so they immediately pulled it down IMDB and then he deleted his post why suspect who got to him who told him to, to delete this why was this a bad idea probably because he's wrong because there was no actual review bombing because if we go back let's take a look again these are the critics giving it a rotten score so it's certified rotten that is and and rotten tomatoes is a aggregator of scores so it just takes positives and negatives but of the 180 they're mostly negative um, or like not high enough to give it a certified fresh score. So I think that's interesting. And we read some of them, right? We saw that some of these scores didn't sound like they were good movies. Like it doesn't, it doesn't say like, like I wouldn't say that this sounds like a good movie based on some of these positive reviews. Like here's one more. Although the experiment of combining commercial cinema with an indie sensibility doesn't always work. There's a lot worth watching. That sounds like, yeah, it's all right. It's not good. It's not great, but it's all right. So, okay. What does this mean for director Chloe Zhao? Now, we don't know. This movie could make a lot of money. Might not. It could be the first bomb for the MCU. We'll, we'll digest that when it happens. But just to remind everybody, this movie's not being released in China. Neither was Shang-Chi. And why is that? Because she pissed off China. China is asshole, and she is part of the China is asshole club. Welcome, Chloe. We appreciate you being a member. You're a gold, and she's a gold star member because she, uh, they dug up in 2013 uh, a, a bunch of uh, cr some criticism of her native country, calling it a place where the lies are everywhere, and that the U.S. is my country now, ultimately. So she tried to undo some of that, but it was too late. And Beijing forgets nothing. So here she won a Golden Globe and an Oscar for being the best director for Nomadland and the first Asian woman to win that. And she, it was, it's not, you can't watch it in China. It's not even BL, she's her, she's a person non grata. They don't even acknowledge that she exists. A complete blackout. So is this review bomb is this review bombing is, is are these negative reviews reflecting the fact that either the critics are just being fair we don't know yet we haven't seen it i'll be stunned to see what the audience score is if it comes in above 30 percent, i think i'll be kind of surprised that'll be my projection watch it here and uh or is this something more nefarious where the hollywood elite are looking at it like if you have been part of pissing off china we cannot associate ourselves with you so it's okay to criticize you like is she ever if this doesn't do well she's never going to do another big budget movie or at least not for many years she's not going to get invited back into the mcu she's not going to be able to do a sequel so where is you know where is dune is being released in china and got greenlit for a sequel even though it underperformed in the box office is this a switch where we're seeing that if you've offended china that we're allowed to blackball you i don't know stay tuned for more pre uh, predictions like that i wonder what do you think what is your projection what do you think it's going to hit with the audience score i know it releases tomorrow uh so what where do you think it's ultimately going to settle about a weekend do you think it'll be rotten do you think it'll be certified fresh might the audience actually like this what do you think the box office is going to do? I'd really be interested in what you guys think the audience score is going to end up being. But we'll see that and more. As for me, uh, you can catch us here at Our Reviews Will Kill You on our podcast. You can download it anywhere, at any time. Have us with you. Have us have a nice conversation with you. You'll feel better afterwards, I promise. Give you some laughs. A little bit of critical breakdown as we do some reviews. And um, as for me, I'm all ready on to the next one. Thanks for watching, folks.